good. What's going on? What is going on? Welcome to the Talking the Word podcast. This is our first episode. How y'all doing, man? What's good, going good. on? What is up? It's been a day. It's been a day. <laughs> yeah, just a day. Glad to be here. Yes, That's sir. Glad yes, to get sir. this That's started. What's up? So we are um, we are coming live from the Abundant Love Facebook account. Um, this is our podcast. It's called Talking the Word. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Go ahead and hit that like and share button. Um, we also have a Facebook account entitled Talking the Word. You can go like that if you haven't already. Um, you're welcome to um, ask questions, make comments. Um, we'll eventually, sooner or later, be going live from YouTube. So we'll have a live chat on that. Um, obviously, you can do the comments on the Facebook channel as well right now. Um, we also have an email account called Talking the Word at Gmail if you want to send us a question. If you have any topic suggestions or anybody you'd like to see on the show, you can go ahead and hit us up on that. Um, we're on Instagram, which is called Talking the Word. Um, so I'm, I'm putting all the plugs in. All the plugs <laughs> you in. You better plug it. And so <laughs> while I'm plugging, you know, we have service at 11 o'clock. This Sunday will be our men's day. Let's Ooh. go ahead and plug that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Sunday school, of course, starts at what, 950? 950, yes. yeah. Yes. There's a plug Sunday school as well. Bible study. Live stream at, at nine. Yeah, the live <laughs> yeah. The Sunday school live stream is the panel is at nine o'clock. The service is at eleven o'clock. And then the Sunday school class, live in Sunday school in the um, sanctuary, is at nine fifty. And then Bible study is at six thirty. So let's plug all Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Yep. <laughs> let's plug all the all the services for abundant lovers. Go ahead and do that. And um, already for episode two, be looking forward to that because we will have our own Bishop Gary L. Bush yes, Sr. Sir. Yes, sir. as our guest. And the topic for our episode number two is what it takes to be a godly man. I can't so wait for that. So definitely looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, so, I can't wait for that one. Yeah, we're definitely going to go ahead and get that going. Being able to pick your dad's brain. Yes, yes. Without so, having an eruption. Right. He doesn't have no <laughs> eruptions. He doesn't have a time limit. Yeah. He can just be relaxed and talk like we do after service <laughs> yeah. or before service. We about to you have, have 30,000 clips yeah, from that. <laughs> yeah, so we're definitely going to have to be ready for that. Um, but just today... Um, the topic, and I think I had it somewhere on here. Yeah. Um, it's. Why the word is important. Yeah. Why, uh, why talking the word is important. Um, what is beneficial about talking the word. And then we have some other things that we'll probably get into. But for the most part, I figured since the name of our podcast is Talking the Word, it would be, you know, beneficial to discuss why Talking the Word is important. Um, I also have our um, live stream up on my phone. Eventually, I'm going to get a laptop or something up here, so I don't have to be looking down on my phone all the time. So if you guys are commenting and you say something, I will definitely acknowledge your comment and acknowledge your question because I, I want to encourage viewer participation yeah. to grow our podcast because we're just talking this is this is barbershop type talk we're having fun we're loose there's nothing formal about this podcast right. we're having fun exactly. talking about the word of god so um i'm gonna do the same thing i do for sunday school <laughs> so because because we've been talking about this podcast for a while yeah. so so like what what did you guys what you guys be thinking about talking about um, as we were coming forward to um, getting in this particular situation here. That's, I think that's a little loaded for me, but um, I like very like thought out particular things. So I think ahead a lot and sometimes I get ahead of myself, but I think doing this now and the time that we are in and three black men talking about not just 
here and making people laugh, which that's probably going to happen, but actually giving people food to live by, giving them something to stand up for. Um, I do a lot of work with people, um, a lot of social work, so I deal with a lot of different attitudes and things like that. So just something you guys may tell me that I never thought about to be able to take to somebody else, bring in the more mental side of things, because that's really important. I don't think that a lot of people understand how much they mental affects their physical and then vice versa. And having something to be able to, most importantly, talk about God with, because you don't get a lot of black men out here that are right. talking about God that are going to bring you there. And then when we get the the really, really woke black people that's talking about God, sometimes it just like surpasses some people understanding. So they're just looking like, man, that dude's way too radical. So just to be in a real life setting yeah. and talking about God and then being able to talk about it from three different males' perspectives, mm -hmm. I think is going to reach out to a lot of people once we get there and people see it all. So that's what I've been thinking about. Been thinking about, I guess, the opportunity to do it or talk about the word and not not in front of all your uh, your your regular peeps. Yeah. Like sometimes, I mean, even at work, there's been some people that came to me and we've had discussions. But however, sometimes we have a tendency to just talk to people who we're around a lot and we don't actually get an opportunity to speak to people who are outside our, our circle. So to be able to to be on camera and, and be able to uh, be ourselves and, and just talk about the things that we normally talk about. We talk about, uh, we talk about sports, we talk about the word of God. Um, we get to pick our pastor brain when after service to get detailed uh, breakdowns of what he discussed. Sometimes we go in the office afterwards and he's he's tired, he's he's worn down, but as soon as we get to talk about he the word, the energy, the energy level yeah. goes right back up and he's back in his element and you would have thought that he he hasn't yeah. even um, preached the message. Yeah, that's good. So it's, it's just one of those things where have an opportunity just to reach out to different people. Yeah, and what I think it's going to do, especially for our church and specifically, it's going to draw men to our church. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot of churches, and it's not a bad thing, but a lot of churches are mainly women. And so I think if men, especially black men, if men see that other black men are having a good time talking about the Bible, it will give them encouragement to come in and be a part of it. I think a lot of times men have kind of build up this wall or this shell that talking about the Bible opens up a level of weakness or softness and you don't want to be vulnerable you don't want to show emotion and a lot of times and, and I and I can admit it you know being an 80s baby being a 90s kid there was no such thing as crying yeah like <laughs> yeah. You, you don't cry you don't cry when you're emotional you don't cry when you're sad you, you just kind of you got to be tough and deal with it but as I get older, I'm like, you know what? It's okay to show emotion. Yeah. It's not yeah. weakness if you show emotion. And it's not, you're not soft or whatever the case may be if you're having a good time in the Lord. Yeah. You know, so many people think you have to go out and, and do X, Y, Z in order to have a good time. Or you can't have fun talking about the Lord. And that's just not true at all. It's interesting how after service, when you have visitors in, and they observe how we interact with one another yeah. after service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when there's a good message that's mm -hmm. going on and we, we get to uh, expound on the word yeah. and having an opportunity to expound and then do it in our, our witty personality, yeah. so to speak. Because mm -hmm. we have, we, after service sometimes, we, there's a lot of laughter going mm -hmm. on. And, and, and <laughs> right. It, 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 Just it not be, formal. It should be fun. Like if yeah. the word of God hits you mm -hmm. and it makes you want to change your mind or whatever, then you should say ouch. But at the same time, if it ministers to you, then it should move you to change some things in your life. If it's a good word and it's so good, you should have fun talking about it. And that's what I think that what happens with us. Yeah, and iron sharpens iron. And that's what we're really here for. And I can't, I'm not going to be able to fight every battle by myself. Nope. I'm going to have to have somebody behind me. I'm going to have to have somebody to be telling me to keep going, somebody there um, supporting me. 
and encouraging encouraging me. You know, that's why I'm saying iron sharpens iron. I, I can't get sharpened by anything else. So if I'm not being sharpened by somebody else, then it's not going to work. <laughs> you just couldn't help yourself, could you? <laughs> <laughs> and this is I'm, why I, I'm this trying is, to hold it together. Is, this is why I love this setting. Because if this was the Sunday school panel, we would have had to keep going. Yeah. But yes, my son Grayson is here, and he just hit the symbol <laughs> for no reason. Why he walks by. <laughs> What's I up, love Grayson? It. He loved the drum. I love, <laughs> love it, the drum. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, it just it also gives us a chance to um because we're in a setting where we trust each other and we family. So yeah. um it gives us a chance to express what we're going through in a setting where you won't be judged. Exactly. And that opens up a whole wave of, you know, being healed. Being ministered to by the word, and then our testimony could help somebody else that's out that's, that's that's viewing. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a way to be relaxed. It's a way to pretty much just have fun and talk about the word. So I actually pulled it up because um, I needed it. So of course, why talking the word is important, and then we'll talk about um, do we as Christians really know the power we can have because of prayer and fasting. And then I think that'll segue into why um, do we think prayer is so unpopulated in our services? And why isn't fasting part of our routine? Because when you talk about fasting, everybody immediately thinks about Oh my God, I can't eat nothing. Yeah, but and it's a diet. Yeah. And that immediately takes yeah. away from what the fast is about. Immediately. Because normally when you when you're supposed to fast, it's not about physically. Of course, physical isn't is part of it, yeah. but it's spiritually getting closer mm -hmm. to God, getting yeah. more powerful. But we'll get into that yeah. later. And it's all it's not yeah. always food. <laughs> right. Anyway. It's right. Like people go immediately to food. And I'm like, no, you missing the point yeah. already. The fast ain't even started yet. Hasn't started yet. So automatically your mind goes to a place of doubt. Oh yeah. Because you think you can't do it because of what you're getting, what you're losing. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. People that's on medications or what have you think, well, I, I can't fast because <laughs> yeah. I'm on medication and I have to eat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's no. um. Oh, I. I'm looking at the live stream. Yeah. And since you was talking about uh, plugging, uh, somebody was talking about the merch. Merchandise. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead and plug the t-shirts real quick. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie Bush, my first cousin. She did the shirts for us. Um, so I'm going to be sending a whole lot more business her way mm -hmm. because immediately we're getting people talking about the shirts. So thank you, Leslie Bush, a.k.a. Mad Bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Mike's nickname, by the way. Right. <laughs> so so I guess if we if you look at it here, because I, I, once you start talking about the fast and everything else, I would just want to take a stab at it. But I'm going to back up. It. Go <laughs> for it. I was going to back up. There's no order. I was going to try to say that because I'm like, yo, we ain't even did one yet. But I think once we start and we really get into the word and we start understanding what the fast purpose really is, I think it's you withholding yourself. And this is me. This is how I look at it. Me withholding myself something that I'm naturally doing all the time and I am comfortable doing. Like, yeah, we all comfortable. We know we have to eat every day. We understand that. And with me eating, that doesn't work because I'll wake up at 9 and I won't eat until 2. So I can already say that I already fast, but that's a normal thing for me. That doesn't work. I can't count that. I didn't sacrifice anything. But for me, since I'm a huge gamer, if I'm like, I'm not gaming this week at all, and I'm not going to game this week. I'm just going to read the normal times that I would game. I'm just going to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a phone game. If I'm sitting down doing nothing or waiting on a client or in between something like that, I'm just going to read the Bible instead of playing a game on my phone. And I might suffer when I get back in like rankings and stuff, but that's I'm not getting paid to play. Right. <laughs> so I'm not really worried about it. But that is me cutting myself off from something that I feel that I'm already attached to mm -hmm. and I do every day. And people like you said, to take medication and things. They always think about food, but I think if we start to think of fasting as something that we are 
used to doing, now we're not going to do it for the sake of me getting closer to God, then that should be it. The last uh, fast that I did, I didn't play my game. And then I didn't have a desire to play it as much as I used to when I got back to it because I was like, no, I might as well just read the word and catch up on something. So that's I think that is a big thing that people don't understand about fasting. We always think about food. We don't think about everything else. And we live in a world of technology. So probably just turning your phone off yeah. will be a fast it's, that will help you tremendously. It's a sacrifice of something you love. So food, food just automatically goes to it because you think fasting diet and the the world can say fast and intermediate fasting and there's no spiritual behind it yep. so in that sense they're using fast but you can say diet in the world because yeah. it's not just spiritual yeah, so but your diet it takes of right. what you read what you right. see so what you watch exactly so if you're somebody who barely eats turning your plate down it's is not it's not going to do nothing for you so what do you love to what do you give your time to yeah. that entertains you oh, so yeah. like you said it could be your phone video games it could be anything so can you sacrifice that time to then get into the word yeah. and not just get into the word and not just read it because if you're really going to sit down and not just read it but study then you can't yeah. just run through a chapter yeah, yeah yeah you cannot do that and i try i've tried it before i'll start reading and then open oh that reminds me of something then i'll open up Find something out. else yeah then open up something else yeah. then you got concordius open and then you got all this different <laughs> stuff open for two verses yeah yeah that, but that's it, what it should do for you exactly yeah. and do people really know what fasting is though see people have this preconceived notion about fasting but one of the main reasons to fast is because you want to get closer to God. You yep. want to exactly. seek him. Exactly. And sometimes you is food is a part of it. Yeah. If you can, but there's many a different ways to fast. So we um as individuals we have to we have to look what fasting is all about. What the ultimate goal is for fasting. You can say fast, I fast. I do intermittent fasting. And then during intermittent fasting means you only eat between a certain block throughout the day. Yeah. So like from say eight o'clock until like eight o'clock PM till like four PM, five PM the next day, I don't eat anything. Unless, you know, sometimes I the stomach be rumbling and you get a snack. But <laughs> this is this is just for uh trying to maintain um, my body weight and um, increase my metabolism and, and so on and so forth. But in terms of actually fasting and seeking God, you incorporate no food, no electronic devices, no uh, phone calls, no uh, no none right. whatsoever. Right. Your focus right. is completely on him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people miss out. They think that Fasting has more to do with um, other things than what you're actually doing. Your goal is to get closer to Christ. And not only that, it taps into a level of power and anointing that you don't have by yourself. Obviously, we don't have anything by ourselves, but you can always get to a higher level. Um, I love uh, Matthew 17. Um, the man said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm reading 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. I brought him to the disciples. They couldn't cure him. Jesus said, oh, you faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. <clears throat> Jesus immediately cast the devil out, and he left and a child was cured that very hour. The disciples came to Jesus all surprised and said, we couldn't cast him out. Jesus said unto his disciples, because you have unbelief. I say unto you, if you have faith, grain of mustard seed, and it's not just the size of the mustard seed. And a lot the, of people say that too. The power. Yeah, all, they, all, the you potency. Need, all you need is mustard seed faith. And they have no idea what Why they say about. It? It's just it's a it's a gospel cliche. Yeah, it's like it is what say, it is. They say all you need is mercy faith. No, you're no. supposed to grow your faith. You grow. So, if, so they're talking about they're talking about 
that little bitty, but it's talking about the potency, potency. of yeah. the mustard seed. Exactly. But they're cliche and talking about, well, if you just have only mustard seed faith, which means you only need a little, a little bit of faith. Bit. And Jesus called them faithless. Yeah. Yeah. They so you're putting a cap on how much faith you should have when Jesus marvels at how much faith people should have. Exactly. We have to be careful, though. What is fasting without prayer, though? Exactly. It, isn't it a conjunction? That's you, first. You, Matthew you, 17. You, you have to have <laughs> them Matthew both. 17. That's verse <laughs> 21. <laughs> How be it this kind go without but prayer and fasting? It ain't good to just fast. You got to pray, too. Yes, sir. If you are opening up your word and you didn't pray before you open up your word, close it and pray again. Or get to the verse where you was going to read and pray before right. you read. You need him with you the whole entire way. And some things that we come up against spiritually, we're not going to be able to tackle if we are not praying and fasting. There, there are certain levels, just like in anything, you don't start off as a CEO in a business. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you started your business. You're going to be running and doing all the work by yourself. You ain't going to be able to say, these are the moves I'm making, get it done. So just like that in the physical world, your spiritual world is the same way. You're not going to tackle high things without having to suffer something. You have to do it. When you play sports, you're, you're training in the off season, ripping your muscles, getting them bigger, letting them grow back. You're working out. You're getting your endurance in, especially people for, like, the Olympics. They train for four years straight for one race or one thing. And you have to be able to – Go into your prayer closet, your perfect spot, wherever you go, whatever it is. Read, pray, hear what God has to say to you, because we have so many distractions around us all the time. It doesn't matter what it is, and these things are a distraction everywhere. It doesn't matter. As long as you got a signal, it's a distraction. And even if you don't have a signal and it's powered up, it's a distraction. So I think that's big. I, I see you. I think that's big, so we got to go ahead and like tackle that problem first. Make sure that you are praying before you open up that Bible to see where God wants to lead you because our way is not always right. Yeah, um, we need to also talk about uh, prayer isn't just a one-way conversation. No. Sometimes no. When, when you're praying, yes, you're talking to the Lord, but you're also supposed to listen. You're supposed to hear and receive what he has to say to you. If, you, if you're not receiving anything or hearing anything from him, then... Um, you need to go back and have some more conversation because the goal is to get information. The goal is to get uh, to hear what thus says the Lord. He gives us direction on what we need to do. Sometimes we have uh, things that's on our plate and we just tackle them without even praying about it first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, we need to acknowledge him talk to him, and then get direction on where we need to go. That's tough. If we do not get direction, we're, are you saying you don't need him? In all thy ways, what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him. him. Because mm. why? He will direct, direct your, your path. path. And so <clears throat> going back to what you said earlier, when you sit down and open your Bible, you should pray first. Because you could read the same verse two or three times. Oh, yeah. But then... You know, God could give you something that you never even thought of about that particular verse. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, it, it, you should pray. And the Bible says, men should always pray and not faint. Pray yeah. without ceasing. <clears throat> yeah. For everything you do, you should be talking to God. Because there's so many things that can happen that could harm us or there's so many people that we have the chance <clears throat> and we'll have the opportunity to talk to who need him and yeah. we might be the only source of his love they'll see for that whole day because the world the world doesn't know him so to the world we are and really we are yeah. we're a representation of him delight mm -hmm. so if we see it, if we see somebody and we're not praying we might miss God's voice to say go speak to them Sir, I don't want to harp on anything. However, <laughs> you know what? We talking about fasting. We talking about praying. You got to implement the word too. Yeah. You have to know. Yeah. You have to oh, know yeah. who Christ is. We have to have 
I don't want to give anything away for tomorrow, so I'm going to save it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but what we, we, we have to have the word. We have to have direction. We have to know who he is because yeah. you can pray and be amiss. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just because you're praying, you're thinking you're praying, right? But you need to know who God is and have direction on how to pray. The Bible talks about uh, he gives an example on how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He's, he's breaking it down. It's a, it's a um, blueprint. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's what the Bible is, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. It's our road map yeah. to where we need to go daily. Yeah. yeah. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. Our daily bread is the word of God. Yeah. So that means we got to be doing it. Daily. Daily. 365. Daily. 366 on a daily. daily. <laughs> but I think once you understand that when you get in your vein you and you hear from God and you're praying, you stop praying and the Holy Ghost prays for you. And there is a time where we have to understand that. But if you don't have the blueprint, like you're saying, or knowing what to pray for, how to pray, and even while you're praying, you will get down there and you'll start praying for yourself. And you'll start praying out of what you desire or what you see. And not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying that you're praying and you're wrong about praying. I'm not saying that. But if you're not praying with God's will, mm -hmm. then you're pray you're basically praying uselessly. Um, ouch. I don't, that sounds bad. But, <laughs> hey, but for real, we're, if we're not praying what God is wanting us to pray or in his will, what we're looking for, that prayer isn't meeting the standard of what God is wanting for us. So if we're not going to do that and we're not going to move forward with, hey, I understand why I'm praying. I opened this book. It was one time I prayed before I started to read and I knew what I wanted to read. And God was like, nope, you're not reading that today. Read this. Because I was taking my journey from Genesis straight to Revelations. I was just going to read it straight. And I was like, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pray today, and I'm about to read this verses in Songs of Solomon. He said, not today, you ain't. <laughs> so I read in Matthew that day instead of reading in Songs of Solomon. And it proved to me what I was going through at that present moment. This is what I needed to hear. So you have to have a word. You have to have a good prayer and an ear to hear what right. God said. Because like you said, that's our communication. Yes, sir. It's not a one-way street. That is the way that we communicate with him, that I need to pray to him so I can hear him. Hey, this is how I talk to you. In this moment of me being vulnerable, I'm reverencing you as God. I am, oh, hopefully you're praying on your knees. Some might, people might lay down, not in the bed, but <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully. That's right, be dozing off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ain't praying. Then you just right. telling yourself a, a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. But once you get there, then it becomes different and you can right. move forward. So, you know, that. Everything we're touching on, I think, is answering our first question. But mm -hmm. um, right. learning that is where we stop. And I think as men, we don't want to get that vulnerable at a lot of times to be that open to say, I'm about to pray, and this is what I'm praying for, and whatever you say, God, this is what we're doing. So it's always a battle every time that you are praying on your knees that you are have to tell your physical man, you got to shut up. Get back down and let me hear what God has to say, because that's going to get me through my next moment. You said something that was that was interesting, though. And Bishop always says, make set appropriate time for yeah. your uh, your prayer time and your study time. Well, if you do it right before bed, after you've had a long <laughs> listen, I can be honest with out. the people. I can be <laughs> honest with the people. I, I went down on my knees and I prayed. And like two hours later, I woke up looking around like I looked at the I was like, literally, I was <laughs> laugh if you want to. I bet there's people out no, there. I've been there. There's that's been people laughing. that's out there that's had that happen. You don't want to do that. No, you don't. So it's, it's more to it than just just praying. You have to yeah. have a dedicated time. You have to set a time, mm -hmm. set apart a time where routine. you can. Yeah that you can pray when you're awake. Maybe the first thing you do when you wake up. Yeah. Not necessarily the last thing you do before you go to bed, but yeah. like maybe a few hours before. Yeah. yeah. Because guaranteed after that hard day of work and the ripping and running that you have, mm -hmm. there's times when you just kind of like Oh yeah, you are. Not off. And you said earlier to incorporate the word <clears throat> in your prayer because what happens is 
when you start studying and reading and really start to get an understanding of who he is, yeah. you use his word on him while you're Ooh. talking to him. Oh, yeah. Because that's what he wants. God, you said in your word that you would heal us. So now I'm coming to you covered by your son's blood. Yeah. So now I can ask you yeah. what you want because that's what your son said. Yeah. Let's do it in 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 the natural sense. You know, if your if your if your father or your parents said that they was gonna give you something, mm -hmm. and you have to remind them sometimes, because sometimes yeah. it seems like, hey, yeah. um, hey, mom, 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 you remember when you said that if I uh, if I go mow the grass that you was gonna <laughs> give me this, uh -huh. you know. Some you have to you have to remind the Lord about His word. Right. T talk to Him. Let Him know. And the thing is, in the natural, our parents might forget sometimes. Yes, sir. He don't forget His no, word. No, he is but His word. His word. Yeah. But while we pray, He wants us to know how much of His word we know. We know. Yes, exactly. And man, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So it's like you were saying, like your parents, like that's you. We call them Father, mm -hmm. Abba Father. We're, we're calling him father automatically, so we should be coming to him. We And a lot of people shy away from trying to go to the throne room of God. But if you are already covered in the blood, or if you're one of his children, you should be able to approach him. You shouldn't be scared to approach God. So go ahead and do what you got to do and talk to him. You, If you're scared to approach your parents, then that's an issue. And if that's the father of all fathers, you should be able to go and talk to him and have no problem. I ain't saying kick down the door and talk aggressively to right, him like what right. you supposed that like you tell me you were supposed no 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 no. Do everybody know how to approach him though? Yeah, not that. Okay, see, go ahead, see, then, sir. See, no, I, I'm I, because you 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 leading somewhere. Yeah, you don't you don't just come to the Lord in any kind of way. Right. Yes. You know there there we. The Bible talks about the, the format of prayer. Amen. You acknowledge him. Okay, first, yeah. you know what? I thank you. Yep. The Bible says give thanks in all things. All things. We got to thank him for, hey, it, people say it's a cliche, but it's true. I want to give honor of God to the head of my life. I want to yeah. thank him for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way. Yeah. All those things are true, they are. but you have to acknowledge him and thank him for what he's done. You have to do it wholeheartedly. Yes, sir. You can't just it go can't through be words. The, yeah, you just can't go through the motions. Yes. Like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. I'm going to say thank you for waking me up this morning. No, if you got to be thankful and you have to have a thankful heart, your heart posture is in very important to God. Yes, you can't fake it with him anyway. He's going to see it anyway. No. <laughs> but it, that heart posture is super important. And if we don't have a heart posture mm -hmm. to be thankful – then we need to learn how to get to a point to have a thankful heart. Then we can start approaching things differently. We yeah. should talk about that. You should talk about the actual format of prayer and how we should go to a guy in prayer. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, first, first and foremost, uh, before we ask him for anything, mm -hmm. you thank him for who he is. Yes, sir. Like just for the opportunity to be able to actually get to the throne room through his son Jesus is something that we really don't deserve. <laughs> and if, if you really if you really break it down like piece by piece, nobody, no human should ever have a chance to get to the throne room of grace. Because we mess it up. Yeah. We all fall Adam, short of the Adam, glory. Adam our messed righteousness us up. is as filthy rags. Yeah. But because he loved us so much, he had a plan. <clears throat> so just for who he is, and you can stay on that and pray the whole time. Yes. You don't yes. have to ask him for nothing. No. We don't have to request nothing for him. We can pray and literally thank him for who he is the entire time. So yeah. like you said, before we do anything, just acknowledge him. Yeah. Yeah. Be thankful. And, then, and our business all the time, you pray away from yourself. So you don't yeah. start the prayer, God, I need this. Lord, give me this. Lord, you know, if it be your will. And then once you start saying if it be your will over and over and over again, you're yeah. really not praying in his will. You're <laughs> praying to get something. You're trying to bend his will to what you want. If I could have this. Right. <laughs> if I right. could do if, this. You know what I'm if it be your will, let me win the lottery. You, you read that book, you know his will. Right, right. <laughs> I love. Listen, I know you love me, and I know you know my heart. So, if 
if, if, if you can manage to put this in your will, give me a billion dollars. Knowing good and well, if he gives you that, you, we won't see you in church for two years. Your heart ain't in the right posture. No. You, it's not there. If, right. if it be the, your will, first the, class the, everywhere the I go. The greatest, the greatest prayer, the greatest inner man battle is Jesus in Gethsemane. Oh, yeah. Because that is, that is the ultimate trying to do his will, but trying to fight it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's fighting that, and, no, and we can't even compare because he, he was literally facing something that he has never faced before yep. in eternity. Yeah. He left eternity <laughs> to step in the dirt to save dirt. <laughs> when most of the dirt that was created by him speaking yeah. is going to reject him. That's big. That's big. That's real big. <laughs> like knowing all this. He knew no, it already, too. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, 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 he knew. So, so he stepped out of eternity to come into a body. Yeah. Knowing at the end of eternity, hell has enlarged itself because his creation that he's getting ready to die for yeah. is going to reject him more than accept him. Yeah. And so this whole time he's like, listen, God, listen, let this cup pass. Hey. But if it be your will, it be your will. Yeah. And not if it be your will, not he said, not, not my, my, will, my will, your will be done. Yeah. We pray if it be your will, yeah. because we want to bend his will. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to break his will mm -hmm. to do his will. Yeah. Knowing the people who's Put that on the shirt. Ready, knowing the people who's getting ready to kill him don't Ooh. even know what they're doing. Don't even know what they Come on, man. Judas was with him, betrayed him. Here comes my friend. Handpicked him. Yeah. Handpicked him. You, come on. I know you're going to betray me, but I need you. Come on. You got work to do before you betray me. Come on. Yeah. yeah. So it's I like, still love you, though. So like you, like you have to pray away from yourself yeah. because it's called being humble. Like You don't just start off asking for stuff. Think about one of the last things Jesus said while he was on the cross. Father, forgive them because they know they not what they, they don't, do. They have they no don't idea. Know. They have, you have no idea what you're doing. That is mind-blowing. And, and, but we get to say that because we're here now. Right, right. I don't now, know what I'll not, say back we're, then. We're but, not in real time. I, yeah, but I'm, I tell you what, after Peter cut that dude ear off, I'm saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For real, though. I'm we talk listen, about it all I'm, the time. If I'm standing next to you and the guy we're getting ready to take cuts your ear off, Pick and it he up. picks it up and puts Put it, it back on, yo, I'm saved. You good, bro. I'm done. <laughs> nope. I'm, yeah. I'm rolling treason. with him. I'm, I'm done. rolling with him. No. What do you need me to do, sir? Because I. No, I can't take you in now. I, mean, I can't like, take you he's in. Like, he's now. like, nope, it's it's not time. I ca I can't take you in now, sir. You, I, I'm just gonna say I didn't find you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I can't. You put my ear back on. Yeah, it's like it's like, man, I I don't know. And so after you after you you thank him and praise him for who he for who he is, you pray for other people. Yeah. yeah. God bless. Yeah. Bless them. Touch them, heal them, save them. Yeah, that's good. Right. And so because it's easy to, to be selfish and ask for yourself. But if you genuinely pray and you put yourself last. Yeah, yeah. Then it shows, it shows, it show, really it shows the love of Christ. Yes. Yeah. Because he put himself last yeah. in order to come down and die for us. He left perfect, our perfection. He yeah. left what we call perfect. Yeah. Nothing was wrong up there. He never explained. Mother, Mother Bush said the reason why angels don't get a second choice because they was already up there. They didn't have no peak. Yeah. They say they say we don't peak in this thing. They didn't either. No. They were created at the peak. At the peak. That's that's nice. <laughs> I never thought about that yeah. like that. So that's like nice. they, they don't get no second You don't you don't you don't get to you don't be created in glory and then get a step above glory. We trying to get there. That's get why we world. have a song they can't sing. Yeah. I have you ain't been redeemed, redeemed by be redeemed. nothing. And you can't be redeemed. Because <laughs> if that was it, I know Lucifer would be <laughs> yes, like, yo, <laughs> homie, <laughs> Listen, my bad. <laughs> and, and there's a there's a whole religious cult based on him not getting a second chance. 
Yeah, you know more about that than me because I ain't never and, heard and, that. And, and pe people don't realize how like powerful he is. Yeah. Yeah. And people are like, well, he don't have no power. Yes, he does. If you're the strongest man in the room, you ain't got to flex all the time. You don't. No. And, but, <laughs> but, but so, like, his, his whole idea is based on self, thinking yeah. that I'm going to get my kingdom above God's. And with that, you get pride, you get anger, you get bitterness, you get every sinful idea yeah. just from I'm going to have mine, which is greater than his. His, his biggest thing is deception, though. Yes. Most definitely. <laughs> He not he he's not gonna and, and and I watched the show Lucifer. It's a good show. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's a it's a good show. But he didn't show everybody. I'm the monster. I'm the devil. No, he tried to hide that. Yeah. He like if, if if you come to somebody and show them your worst nightmare and yeah. fear and fire and brimstones, they're gonna choose the opposite. Oh, I don't want to burn for eternity. No, but he has to use deception. Number one, because how do you convince the third of the angels to leave with you? Exactly. That's crazy in itself. Yeah. And so yeah. if you if you convince created beings to leave what they were created for, yeah. how do you think he gets us so easily? Oh, yeah. He, he really don't have to try no more because mm -mm. the stuff that he's trying to do is seeping into the church. <laughs> the world is already going. They don't care. But mm. now the people that supposedly, the people that are supposedly supposed to be against him yeah. are pretending in the church yeah. because it's really for self-gain, the same thing he did. Oh, yeah. And he's taking them with him through the church. Yeah. And I can give you I can give you enough truth wrapped in a lie that's gonna keep you there. Just a little just bit. A, just a little bit. That's all I gotta, just a little bit. Just a little bit. I just gotta give you a little bit so you don't understand what's going on. You 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 not you not really gonna die. Right. You no, no. You, he's in, scared he's gonna you gonna in, be like him. In, in fact, God is keeping something from you. Yeah. He don't want you to be like him. You can't is do he, that. Is he really all knowing? Because if he was, why wouldn't he tell you about this tree? All he said was, don't eat it. Why? Right. Right. Just to get you enough to ponder. Yep. Just enough. And then if you're not, if you're not buckled in and you never read that word, that, that little bit, just like mm -hmm. I use the example all the time, all the time, like one word will make a big difference. The world says money is the root of all yep. evil. And yep. it's, that's love. not what the book says. The love. That's, not. That, 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 mm -hmm. that word love, if you understand what love really is, if you understand what that is, mm -hmm. most people will die for love. They'd kill for love. Mm -hmm. Like when you're really in love, Jesus died for us because he loved us. Right. God so loved the world. So when you understand what love really is, him taking, even now, people still say it, but taking the word love out of there, makes that statement so different. Right. Yes. Because mm -hmm. then you got people, well, I don't know why the church want right. money. Ain't money because, the root of all then, evil. Because then you'll have people really believe in that and yeah. then they won't they won't go out and work for money yeah. because they believe money is evil. Yeah. So you're getting tricked. It, when Jesus said give Caesar what is due to Caesar. What is he talking about? That's money. money. That's my, you have people be thinking Jesus was broke. Yeah. Like Judas handled the money. Right. He was giving alms to yeah. the people. So you just broke no. giving alms? Like, no. 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 Like, it's the love. And when you break that, like you just said, when you break the love down, yeah. it's what are you willing to do for it? Exactly. The people who do immoral yep. and deceitful oh, and yeah. sinful things to gain money. To gain. That's the root of all evil. Yes. Because they love it more than anything yes. else. You see people, you see, and we hear stories about people killing <clears throat> brothers, sisters, wives, husbands, just for right. money, just for the check. Right. And that's where it comes from. And then, you know, now today everybody's saying they chasing the bag. Mm -hmm. So you loving the bag more than you loving everything right. else. Don't will, let nothing get in your will, way of the money. Will, will you blatantly disobey God for, for the money? money. Yeah. That's 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 what the verse is talking about, basically, because that's that's the whole idea. Can you can you sprinkle a little bit of truth in there so that eventually you lose sight of the blatant disobedience? Yeah. God just played it out. Here's the tree. Don't eat it. That's it. That's it. 
There's nothing more, nothing less. You don't need to know why, and that's the thing. Yeah, Our we free want will, to know why. Yeah. He gives us the opportunity yeah. to ask why. But yeah. really, he's all-knowing, so we don't have the right to ask why. Who are we to ask him why? Ask your parent <clears throat> why I have to go clean. Because I said so. <laughs> I said so. Say it again. <laughs> ask it again. <laughs> They ain't like that no more, though. No. Parents ain't like that no, no. more. And, they, and then they're going back in, and I'm going to say, ouch, it is. Because I'm going back and forth. Well, why I got to do this? Or well, because it is. Why I got to do this? Instead of because I said so. Yeah. Like, yeah. My, my word is the authority. Yeah. And that's what, that's what the serpent got in and, and tricked Eve with. Yeah. Your yeah. authority doesn't mean that much to me. Yeah. She gave, she gave away being more like him eating the fruit than she ever was going to be close to him. And that was the deception. The deception was so sweet. And, gee, he just, he just sprinkled it in there real quick, just, just yeah. gave you a dab of it, he and that was all you needed. He didn't say a whole lot. No, no, I don't need to say Because the more you talk, the more you got to explain. So, that hey, I don't – really? I think, oh he, I, I think that you just – I think oh that he's goodness. scared that you're going to be just like oh, him. Oh, that's good. That but the more you talk, the more you got to explain. Is, if you ever see any con artists, they don't keep going, 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 and going. And then when you ask them a question, they flip right back to what they said before. So it's the just less the you say, yeah. the less you have to remember what you said. Yep. Because it's easy to maintain a story. I don't have to use the term lie. You know, back as a kid, we got in trouble for saying lie. You better not say lie. You better not say lie. But yeah, no. I mean, it's it's easy. The less you say, the yeah. easier. It's like, okay, I can remember this. Oh yeah. But as soon as, cause I'm quick. I listen to people. Mm. I listen to what they say, and then I'll be like, but you said a few minutes ago that you said this. Yep. Instantly, yep. my antennas go up. I'm like, okay, your word is is no good. Oh yeah, it, man. <laughs> antennas going up. The Holy Spirit should be your antenna all the time. Right. It right. should be checking but everything it's, that's but it's going about, on. How much word do you have in you? Exactly. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. If you really love the word, then you read it not just for knowledge, yeah. but for understanding. Yeah, for knowledge is good, yeah. but having the wisdom to decipher what's literal and what's metaphorical mm -hmm. and what is um, symbolic yeah. will help you so much. So many people take what should be symbolic as literal, and they do yeah. crazy stuff, oh, and then yeah. they teach false doctrine because of that yeah you know we all over the place we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about fasting we was talking about the word he and said we was no talking order. about he prayer. said no order that ain't my fault i wanted to start with number you, one you, you said i wanted to start you wanted with to start number with number one, number one but then you jumped to two <laughs> we we did we did we cover all of them oh. Dude, why is talking the word important that we do we that. as Christians really know the power we can have? Because that's, of that's, prayer, that's, 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 okay, there we go. That one, and, that's a good and one. And that segues into, you know, why do we think, or why is prayer so unpopulated? So to hit number two, do we really know how much power we have because of prayer and fasting? I don't think we do. No, no. Because I can answer number two with saying number three. When we start church. Yeah. How many people are in prayer? If yeah. if we really realized how powerful yeah. prayer is, then we would run to the start of service yeah. because that's what we do that's to start do. it with prayer. That's good. You know, I can attest to this. I I don't know. How can you be in church for years and not understand that there's there's warfare mm -hmm. when you pray? Because mm -hmm. you're not we, we we have a conversation. We can just talk, mm -hmm. have yeah. a regular conversation. But when it goes time to pray, it's as if your mind goes somewhere else, yeah. and you draw a blank, and you're like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. Especially when you're in front, yeah. at home in the privacy of your own home, is somewhat easy. Mm -hmm. But it's like when you're in the sanctuary, and you're with. A group you're with other individual other saints and stuff and we're you know we're praying we're trying to be on one accord it is very difficult sometimes there's always something 
shouldn't say always, but a lot of times there's some things that's going on in your thought process mm -hmm. that's preventing from you to, 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 to get into the spirit. Mm -hmm. You're really trying to pray, but you, you're giving, you're, it's, it's word service, mm -hmm. so to speak. You don't necessarily get in like you was talking about, move, I, I forgot the term that you used, but you, you can't stay focused on yourself. You got to go broad. You got to go as far away if you can and then come in. Mm -hmm. So you start talking yeah. about the world as a whole. Yeah. You yeah. start talking about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the country. You start talking about the state. You start talking about uh, your city, your family. Yeah. And, then, and then you go from all the way out, all the way in. But prayer is... The warfare in prayer was one of the reasons why it's difficult for people to want to come in and pray. Because when you pray, especially audibly, some people have a tendency, if you, if you don't have your thought process and you, you start fumbling over words, I don't stutter. Why am I stuttering in prayer, during prayer? Can't get what's going out. Well, first of all, it's like anything you do. You practice. Yeah, the yeah, more you go. practice, mm -hmm. the more you pray. Not so much that it, it becomes easier, but it's just like um, in sports. We, um, basketball, you, you, run, you run plays, and you do it over and over yeah. and over till you Repetition. get to a place. And even, even when you still get good, there's still times where you exactly. need to. Exactly. You just have to do it repeatedly, and sometimes yeah. when when you get nervous and then uh, you feel some kind of way, you like I'm not going back there again. Now I'm embarrassed. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. Do you think that, um, or for for the for the ones who know that they will pray audibly in church, do you think they avoid that because they just don't have enough word in them? Because, like, if you have the word in you, then you can pray from your heart what the word says. But if you are constantly repeating the same things over and over again, you don't have enough word to pray the word. That could be it. So instead that. of getting into the atmosphere where prayer is going on, you don't have nothing to say because you're not in the word enough. That could be an idea. That's or one. you could use... Like you just said, you could use as a crutch, I'm not a good public speaker, I get nervous, and so I'm just going to wait until they say amen, or I'm going to just come a little bit late. Did, Mo did, did Moses try to say that? Did yeah. he get, did he, yeah. did, did he yeah. get away? That's, that's no excuse. Mm -hmm. That's no excuse. I'm, I, I, can, I can attest to this as well. I wasn't no good public speaker. You, you get in front of the camera, especially... I got to a place where in front of my brothers and sisters, I can speak freely. Yeah. But when you're in front of the camera, sometimes you look, it's almost like, I can't remember, it was some television show. And as soon as that red light came on, they instantly froze. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's just something about it. But we, we just have to, we have to move outside ourselves. We can't think about um, what people are going to think of us. Yeah. We can't yeah. think about. But I think fear, uh, fear is real from the devil. I, God didn't give us a spirit of fear mm -hmm. um, at all, but I also I think it goes back even further than what you two both said because that's both you both of you are right. But Wednesday night we ain't even got them in here. Ooh. Somebody said something on the uh, stream. Bishop said the lack of prayer and fasting limits our altitude of faith. Most definitely. Oh, most definitely. See, this is why we. This yeah. is why I'm looking forward to the second episode. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> but I think that we don't even have people in here, um, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to be funny. I'm glad that we do it. Um, that we do put people in to pray. We do mm -hmm. ask other people to pray to get mm -hmm. people in rotation, because um, we we didn't find some people that can actually pray, mm -hmm. that can do some things. But we got to get them here, mm -hmm. and they're not coming here. And I think they're not coming here because prayer is not exciting to them. Mm -hmm. Church is exciting. I get to hear somebody preach. They might squall. I get to hear a choir. I get to hear music. I kind of get to be entertained mm -hmm. in a sense. When I'm and I'm talking about when I'm not thinking about like I'm not all the way in. 
I'm coming to church because that's entertainment. I'm coming to church because it's something to do on a Sunday. I'm not coming to church to really meet God. I'm just coming on a Sunday. I'm not talking about people that are seasoned. I'm not talking about the difference in between stuff. I'm talking about getting people in here. And a lot of people don't come because there's no singing, there's no clapping, there's no shouting, there's no music playing all the time. I'm getting just straight word, and that's just it. And that that forces me to level up. I have to. If I'm un- I can't sit under pastor all day and not learn nothing. I couldn't sit under Mother Bush all day and not learn anything because they're going to keep drilling it into me because that's who they are. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. So if you're not able to get here, I think the enemy is just like, don't go. You can- What you going for? And it's not fun. That's, that's a part of his plan, too. Yeah. Because if you think about him in heaven, he was a musical being. Yep. So he uses his platform that he had oh, yeah. to then take what really should be the focal point yep. in church and flip it. Because now we talk about it all the time. Church is becoming what? Big business, yeah. which is the love of money. Yeah, big entertainment. And entertainment. Yeah. Which means that you're not powerful. Yeah. You're just putting on a show. Yep. So where to worship at? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. So, that, so if right. I'm coming so. to church and everything I'm doing is clapping, I'm cheering, the preacher, the preacher get up, I get to high five my neighbor all the time. He's saying a word. I'm always going to be blessed. I'm prospered. I'm, it's not about I'm, this. That's yes, what I'm saying. Right, I'm right. watching. That's what I'm yeah. getting. And I'm not saying me and us. and other, I'm saying for the general public, when they're starting to bring people in, when we're starting to do stuff, everything they see on TV is all entertainment. That's it. Mm-hmm. When I look at some of the mega churches all the time, and I'm not going to call no names, and I'm not talking about people. Most of them have a whole bunch of demonstrations. Most of them are telling you this is what's going on. We're not getting a lot of conviction or correction. We're getting the, we're only getting one part of God. We're only getting he's going to bless you. This is what he's going to do. We're not thinking about Deuteronomy 28. (laughs) We're not looking at what curses can come if we don't do what's there. We're not looking at the warnings and everything. All we're looking at is the happy, happy, joy, joy, Mm -hmm. per se. So if I'm, why am I coming to prayer when I got to sit on my knees for an hour? I already played sports. I got a bad knee. Well, well, I mean, (laughs) the devil, the devil tempted Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus used the word to make him flee. The Bible says, resist the devil. He'll flee from you. How do you resist him? With the word. With the word. But you're not, you, I'm not saying that I want to make prayer a party. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> no. I'm not saying that. I'm just it, saying that they don't, we have to get past the hump of them coming. Mm-hmm. Once we can get them here, because, then it's something because else. Because prayer, prayer is, is hard work. And Chris yeah. said it, it's yeah. warfare. It's warfare. So you really got to come in here and you, we're battling, we're battling demons. Yeah. In prayer. Yep. Things yeah. that things seen and unseen. That's yeah. what we're battling, and 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 really, what prayer does is it destroys yokes. Yep. And people have gotten so comfortable living in what they're going through, yeah. it becomes normal, and they don't know how to break a yoke. Yeah. But you don't you find it interesting that one of the reasons why uh, some of the most powerful part of Sunday school is when our bishop gives the comments afterwards that's not on the live stream. Yeah. And sometimes, and before we started having uh, live stream as a whole, he would usually, because the atmosphere was already set, mm-hmm. yeah. and it was easy for him to go directly into the word because yeah. of the people that were here, the atmosphere, the, the ground was, was right. set. Yeah. So if we wait sometimes until the people who haven't been in prayer, who came in after the fact, now the, 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 the service is, 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 is hard to push heavy. through. Yeah. It's very heavy. heavy. Because then you put, the, you put the tilling and all of the heavy duty work on the people that should be planting. So they, the ground should already be tilled. Mm-hmm. Now the choir got to get up and try to break it. Now at offering, you, the pastor want to give you a little word and sing another song to try to break it and get people excited. And then by the time, he might, oh, I might have to get a psalmonic solo to get somebody yeah. up here to get and, the girl. And, and, and I understand, like, sometimes if you got to be late, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. But the ones who really, really, really 
want to be here, who yeah. want to be in prayer, who want to be in Bible study, who want to be in Sunday school, they're going to press their way. Yeah. And yeah. that's why the atmosphere is so great in those settings, because you got people who has a willingness to want yeah. to learn. Mm -hmm. And so there's no heaviness because everybody's attentive and they're wanting to work. Yeah. Sunday school has been so good for about the last seven or eight months Facts. because everybody in Sunday school is like this and they want the word. Yeah. And then if somebody gets up and has a good comment, it's like popcorn because yeah. you're just waiting to say something, yep. but you want to make sure you ain't first. <laughs> And I, that's why I miss my Uncle Bobby because no matter what, oh, he, he was, was going to have up. a copy. He was it didn't matter. Up. <laughs> he would just be on the edge of his seat just waiting, yeah, whether yeah. it be the stream, the panel, or whatever. Yeah. But that's what happens. The word should excite you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I think that I'm just going to have to uh, warn, warn the people that's out there. There's going to be a time. I know it's coming. It's happened before. Bishop went directly from Sunday school into his word oh, yeah. right then before live stream. So I remember that. I, I uh, put a plug in. It, it, he, you do yourself do yourself he, some justice and he, come in. He could have done that several times. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, and I, and think, I think he's 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 been doing it because yeah. he's like, okay, I want to set it yeah. up for the live stream. If he gets yeah. a, if he gets anointed, he might as well. Because yeah. the ground is already right. I so, give him the microphone yeah. sometimes. If, if, the, if the ground is already tilted, yeah. Yeah, sir. then the heaviness coming in, I mean. they don't have no choice but to realize what's going on exactly. and just jump in. Exactly. And that's what, it's too much of, of course, you need to bring your stuff to church, lay it on the altar, leave yeah. it there. Mm -hmm. if, if that's where it really is. If you can't get it off of you and you need somebody else, that's what we're here for. Like I said before at the beginning, iron sharpens iron. We need to be here to do that. But when you come into, when you get into the Sunday school and you're coming to see it and the pastor's already up, when you walk in and he's in it, you already know. You feel it when you get in here. But if you're not in tune with that, you're not going to come in and be like, man, y'all still ain't started yet. And what, and what, sh and that, right. And that's what brings heaviness into yeah. it. Yeah. It's like, man, why church ain't started? It's all, it's, yeah. it's 1130, it's 1145. Or Instead you, of, oh my goodness, what did I miss? Exactly. Or you get in like, man, he already up preaching. And he's like, man, I didn't miss it. And then, oh, right. it's, So what oh, it should do, it Sunday. should yeah. give you a sense of urgency. Yes, sir. So that yes, next sir. week, I'm not late because I'm not missing this. Exactly. Right. But we, like I said, it, it's not when you sit down, unless you're into it, it's not entertaining to right, you. Right. And I hate to keep saying that, but that's what we're turning church into. And we need to switch the focus of being entertained and to put on your thinking cap. Right. Come in and be like willing all, to learn. All that stuff is just a segue for the word. Exactly. Like the word and prayer should be the most important things that happen in church. But what has happened is the enemy has like he's so angry he's used like so he he wants to do everything opposite yeah so if the most powerful parts of church is the word of god being preached or taught and prayer because that's you know where two or three are gathering his name yep. he's in the midst um where you know one could chase the thousand ten could put two could put ten thousand to fight yep. so there's power in prayer so the most unpopulated things is what he's using to to drive people away from that. Yep. And so if you look at mega ministries, like you said, there's about fifth, there's about six, seven, eight different songs. Yeah. It's all music. They using fog screens. They're using a bunch of flashing lights. It's making yeah, it a man. show. It's a show. And then the pastor will come up and he will preach a general, like motivational speaking type yeah. message yep. to make you feel good. Yeah. And then ask you to give a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. What does that do for your soul? Yeah, Nothing. what does it do for your soul? What are, how what is changing your life to saying yeah. you're gonna be blessed? Exactly. I mean, yeah, you're true. Yeah, you but, will be. But you what, got a blessing but, waking but up today. What do you have to do to get the blessing? <laughs> Jesus says, seek ye first. Yes. He, he said, but God. seek ye first. Yeah. The verses before that, he told you what you gotta do and what you might get yeah. if you seek the kingdom. Yeah. But that's why he said, but first. Yeah. The kingdom. You you got to seek the kingdom. You can't be king dumb. You have to seek the kingdom. <laughs> and, it, and, and that's just I what like it is. It. That ain't like mine. That ain't mine. That ain't mine. I ain't taking no credit for it. <laughs> that is not mine. <laughs> that but is like, not mine. It's, it's, it's so, it's so backwards. Mike. It's so backwards. And so how, how, like what, what do, as the, as the people of God, what do we have to do 
or is it something that can be done? Because I think I think God is going to have to just send people back to their knees. But is there something that we can do to um, get people to realize how much power we can have in prayer? We can model certain things in front of people. Yeah. <clears throat> But ultimately, sometimes things happen in our lives to get us to the place that uh, we need to be. Yeah. Uh, things that happened in my life, I wouldn't have been at church. I wasn't yeah. thinking about church. But the, the seeds that was planted when I was younger yeah. allowed me to recognize that when something came upon me that I couldn't handle, I was like, but there's, there's someone yeah. And his name is Jesus right. that can get me out of the situation that be. I'm in. Yep. And so you run to the place yep. uh, where there's comfort. Yeah. But you have to know. So it starts know. with wit witnessing yep. to people mm -hmm. yeah. so they understand and know who Jesus is. Then you get them to the place, uh, which is church, so they can uh, so they can hear the word. Then yeah. you uh, you you give encouragement. Mm -hmm. And then in the process of encouragement then you explain in detail we can you know we can have conversations yep. uh i don't know if we've actually done this I, I i i mean we do it amongst ourselves but how often have we went up to somebody and said hey what do you think about the word yeah what did you get out of the word this morning yeah. I, i'm gonna be honest when i first started um 19 years ago uh i was coming word was good and somebody asked me so what was the word? What was yeah. it about? Yeah. And I was, I drew a blank. Mm -hmm. And I used to keep a notepad because what happens is, and I know people be like, well, you shouldn't be on your phone, but sometimes you're, you're taking notes or you have a notepad. And what a notepad does is it bring back to your remembrance yeah. what was going on. So you just highlight, you don't have to write everything word for word, but you can talk about certain aspects of what the yeah. word was. And then you can be like, you know, Bishop talked about this. The scripture was this. And then you can have a dialogue or a conversation about the word. But there are so many people that be like, I don't know what he talked about, but he sure preached. Exactly. Because you didn't come to church to hear it. You just came to church. I think that the people are the church. And we need to take the church to the people that are not coming to church. Mm -hmm. Once we Once we are shining his light on everybody, there's a church that goes door to door. And I've answered the door for him a couple of times. And they tell me what their church is doing. They're telling me, they invite me to their church. I let them know I have a church. Um, but they also, before they leave, they always ask, can they pray? So they come to the door. They just explain what they're doing. And they say, hey, can we pray for you? And then the, the pastor comes up because it's the uh, pastor and their wife. Um, they come up and he prays for us. And then we just have that word and we go. And I think that and giving that flyer out is something that we don't see a lot of churches doing anymore. Yeah. And they're hitting the pavement every every Saturday morning, going around the neighborhood where their church is, and talking to those people first. And I think that's very good. And then offering the prayer right there. Mm -hmm. Like, do y'all need anything? To, do you want me to pray about? Do you have anything you want to pray about? Luckily, you know, they talked to me. And now I'm the only person I can only speak from my experience. But I have a relationship, so we can pray. So we all sit out there and pray, and we do that. But I think that's very good, and I think people don't come here when I was young, if my mama didn't come to church, she was sending me to church. Mm -hmm. I was taking the, you know, the church van and to get to church. So um, I, we don't do that anymore. There's kids that don't even come to church, and the parents come to church, and the, the kids are still at home. And I think if we just get them here to see the difference, they will feel the difference. I, I always don't want people to have an emotional experience, but you're going to have an emotional experience first. We have to be careful, though, because with certain things that happen – internally inside church we have to be ready and prepared for people when they come yeah. because there can't be any bickering or anything going among amongst um the saints people are looking at, they look internally and in, from the outside and like well i came outside the world uh, to, for something thing. different and they're yeah. doing the yeah, exact doing same, the same thing, thing. Yeah. we are represent uh representatives of christ yeah whether we want to believe it or not and if people look at us there was somebody that said, or this is a term, we are the only Bible that some people may ever read. Yep. So some of the things that we do 
is um, we're representatives representatives of Christ, and if our our actions aren't representing Christ the way that it should be, then we yeah. need to check ourselves. And yeah. a lot of people say that, well, I can study at home. I don't really have to go to the church. Um, I got my Bible. I can watch the stream. And that's true. You definitely can. But you get a, you get a certain anointing mm -hmm. when you um, come to the building. Now, no, the building is not the church. Yes, yeah. Because we are the church. Yeah. But coming to the building will get you a level of anointing that you can't get at home. Yeah. Because the Bible says that I will send you pastors yeah. after my own heart. Well, your pastor <clears throat> isn't coming to your home. Yeah. And Rhema word doesn't come to your home. So when the stream is That's off, good. the word that you need yeah. could be missed because you're not in the building. Exactly. And then I think COVID has stopped a lot of pastors from laying hands. Yeah. Now, granted, now the pa there's no power in the pastor's hand. Yeah. But there is an anointing that he has and an agreement with your faith that yeah. laying on a hands could get you the healing and the deliverance that you need. Uh -huh. so, so I think, you know, like, and we talked about witnessing. And witnessing doesn't have to be no 45, 55 minutes. Exactly. It's just living by example. What Chris said. Yep. So you might be the only Jesus that people they will see. see. Yeah. And if you <laughs> act certain, if you act the way here and yep. act a different way out there, then the world is like, well, you ain't no different than me. Yes. Yep. And so that's living by example, yep. um, showing Christ's love. And that's that's the biggest thing. Yep. And you you said the word bickering. And you can use any other words, the bickering, fighting, gossiping, yep. judging, any everything that we do that we're not supposed to do deters people. And what it happens is we don't create an atmosphere for people that are not church to be vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's big. Without being vulnerable, you're not going to make it to your next level. You're not going to be able to get in with people and sit down with people and really get over what you have on your plate. Um, it's a lot of stuff that goes on in everybody's life on a daily basis. And I do believe if we we tell people we're still human or we're going to make mistakes, don't look at me to be Absolutely. perfect. You know, I'm not going to be perfect. Not at all. Um, but I'm trying to be biblically perfect and be complete. Right. I want to be complete. Whole. You know, whole. Mature. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Right. I want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to mm -hmm. be. I'm not going to be <clears throat> doing everything exactly right. Um I just say me, myself, I'm very straightforward, so sometimes it comes off very heartless. <laughs> but I do have a heart. I'm just, I'm just saying this is just what it is. So with some people that don't understand that, they won't, they won't know. So you have to be able, like y'all both said, to show, shine that light that God gave you to show what Jesus would do. Do it in love. And even when you are upset, still show love. Like, I don't like that, but I'm not, I'm not about to retaliate against you it just it just wasn't the right time so as long as we are showing the people what we're supposed to show them get out to them witness to them give them a card let them know hey here's my number if you need something be ready available to pray for somebody in and out of season we're all not going to have great days but it might be a bad day for you and a worse day for somebody else and if you got god with you you should be able to put everything down and help that person pray for that person and we have to show them that. And like, I, I don't like that everything is the show me state. Like, we live in St. Louis, and you got to show me everything and do it. But we're living in a time now that everybody's seeing everything. You, the Internet is showing you everything. you got a lot of information. Kids that are young know stuff they shouldn't know yet. And it's just because we have information all the time. So you have to be that biblical information for people. You have to be able to show them what Jesus would want you to show them. So you have to stay connected. And I think we don't connect enough outside of churches and other church people that we are just always fellowshipping with somebody that already is saved or talking to somebody that's already gave their life over or is going through something. Now, we do have friends that are not saved, but are we really talking to those friends that are not saved? Like, yo, I can't go there. I can't do this. I can't say that. I can't drink that. Like, I, that's not what I do anymore. So even though it seems really like the stuff that we talk about base level, but that's foundational. And if we don't have a solid foundation, we can never build. Um, one of the comments said, um, Nicole Williams, she said, 
she believes that more people are seeking purpose and are going to church to understand what their purpose is. So we have to continue to work on our fellowship Ooh. and our actions once the visitors attend the church. And you're right. And that yeah. just goes as far as just, you know, being courteous, being yep. kind, and showing love. Exactly. Jesus said the greatest commandments are love God with everything in you, heart, mind, and soul. And the second is, as like to that one, is love your neighbor as yourself. I was just getting ready to say that <laughs> as fellas, we it's usually easy for us to communicate with one another. Is I remember when I first started coming, at, at the end of service, I left as quickly as possible, and the fellowship slowly started happening. You know, y'all cousin Mike, I got to, uh, got to be around him a lot, and then Mike had me laughing to the point to where I was more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So then I was able to stay afterwards, and then once you get into the fellowship, then you start talking about things because once you get comfortable around the people that you are, you got to remember, these people don't know who you are. And they're not just going to, well, most people don't randomly just jump into conversations with people that they don't know. Right. So when you have an opportunity to get close to somebody and just, especially at the end of service, because, you know, people will be trying, they'll try to run. There's yeah, still people that the moment the service is over, they're out of oh, yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So if you can get up to them before they leave and just kind of give them a little bit, tad bit of encouragement, yeah. you know, ask them did they enjoy themselves um, and say, um, it was wonderful to see you here. I mean, it's something when somebody takes time out to recognize you yep. as somebody because – most people who come to church, they're missing something in their life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if they're missing something, then just having somebody yeah. to uh, to just a brief conversation mm -hmm. or a little bit of encouraging, yeah. encouragement goes a very long way. Yep, that's what, and that's pretty much what Nicole said. She said they seek a purpose. So people who did not grow up in church, um, obviously they're missing something in the world. Mm -hmm. So like, what am I coming to church for? Um, obviously, I have a gift or I'm missing something in my life. And so many people have came to a church and they weren't greeted. They weren't shown love. Yeah. And so immediately yeah. they already had a perception about this church yeah. because the greeter was mean or the yeah. usher was mean. Yeah. And so you can't focus on the word that you might need because the usher didn't even just say hi to you yeah. or they said hi to you. But they had an attitude dealing with their week. Mm -hmm. So there's so much that goes into it. But I mean, at the end of the day, if we just if we just show genuine care, yeah. and you don't gotta be all deep, or oh, how you doing, brother? I'm blessed and saved to the Lord. You don't got, <laughs> you don't take all that. It doesn't. And, and like, if I'm at Walmart and I know you, and I know you go to church. Don't say praise the Lord to me in Walmart. <laughs> You can say what's up. Yeah. Like I'm still a human. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, I'm good. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, come on, man. I'm gonna just walk away. I don't care. <laughs> it's like if you if you hit me with I'm blessed and highly flavored, which I mean you could be. Yeah. And you can be happy about that. Yeah. But you don't have to be all extra and deep. All the time. All the time. All the time. You don't gotta you you don't have to put on a, a front. And that's what I think a lot of times that's, that's what people do. It's yeah. like they try to be fake. They, like you don't have, like you said it, you don't have to prove that you holy by saying you holy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words. Exactly. I'm going to treat you nice. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going yeah. to try my hardest yeah. to live a perfect and godly life. Oh, yeah. And you perfect be... meaning whole and mature. Yes. Which means staying away from things that tempt me to disobey God. Yeah. And you have to understand, like, that everybody is not going to accept blessed and highly favored when you talk no, to them. And no. You have to meet like, people. What does that mean? Yeah, if, you, if you ain't never been to church, what is yeah. What is favored? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you have to meet people where they are, but you also have to have the standard about you. And just because you said what's up does not mean that you ain't saved. That's almost off. <laughs> so, yeah, because I just spilled something before. It's not nice. But, um, but you got to meet people where they are. I, I, I kind of like that saying. I don't like it all the time because I think people get it kind of confused. But just because you meet people where they are, don't mean you got to take a drink while they drinking. But you can set a standard and say, yeah, I'm going to meet you where you are. 
and understand where you are because mm-hmm. that's the only way I'm going to get you anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I can't get you out the hole if I jump in the hole with you. <laughs> like, so I have to I have to put the rope down there. I got to give you a hand and pull you out. Mm-hmm. And I can say what's up and have a whole conversation with you that way. And once I build a relationship with you and understanding what's going on, when it gets per- when we get personal, then I can start to introduce stuff. Right, but while right. I'm talking to you, I'm going to feed you scripture or I'm going to feed you the word mm-hmm. or I'm going to feed you some happiness throughout. I tell everybody that I work with, I'm like, I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to give you some word behind what I'm saying. I, 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 yeah. if, if you coming to me for advice, you're going to get some word behind it. I'm going to be realistic mm-hmm. with you. Absolutely. But you're going to get some word behind it. Mm-hmm. And once I once I tell you what's going on, if you you take it how you want to take it. Mm-hmm. And if you want me to give you book, chapter, verse, I'll give that to you mm-hmm. too. But I'm going to give you something in there to let you realize like you have help outside of what you're going through. Absolutely. And there's a place where you can go. And if you need to come to my church, come on. I love you to co- I love mm-hmm. for you to come. Mm-hmm. But if you have a home church or you had a place you used to attend and you want to go back, I'm just happy that you're taking yourself back to church. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. that's just it. Absolutely. So get back in that kind of way. I can talk to anybody on any level and still give you a piece of the word no matter what. And that's what we have to do. If the devil can take a word out, I'm going to put some word in. And that's just where it is. And that's I think that a lot of people don't do that on a daily basis. I'm good. Good. Did, <laughs> so did we hit did we hit three? Um why is um church so unpopulated? Yeah, I think we hit that. Yes, sir. Listen, man. I like this. Yeah. This is Every this day. this is it. Um so I, you know what? I think I think that's it for that's the night, it. man. That's good with me. Yeah. Um so I'm looking at the comments now. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Um, let me see, uh, Pastor Bush. Um, I see Pastor Davis. Um, What's going on, sir? Nicole, Nicole Williams has commented. Um, Marianne Cook. Um, I don't have them live. Oh, come on, man. I know it gets. Yeah, um, Kylie Hawkins, um, Darlene Bush, Venus Martin. <laughs> um, Kyra Smith. So I appreciate everybody that has tuned thank in. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, appreciate you. Want you to uh, what you say, Mother Davis? Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna call everybody's name because right now my phone hey, is cousin not watching. Yeah, my phone <laughs> is not um, showing, and then that's why I need a laptop. But I'll do that as well. Listen, this is the first episode. I appreciate. So um, more will come. I promise you that. So and we'll, we'll we'll do our best to stay yeah. on the topics. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. Look, <laughs> we'll we we jump topic. all around. So the the idea is to have some topics and spend some time on that topic, and then maybe segue to the next topic. If we jump around, we jump around. <laughs> but that's what they comments are for. Exactly. So and, if and, and please or, comment. Please yeah, comment. comment. If we say so, something that you want more explanation yeah. about and or. The, Go right, ahead, yeah, and, the, yeah. the, and like the reason why we're on our phone because we want to see the comments as yeah. they come in because we want to acknowledge them because y'all be saying some good stuff too. Yes. Oh yeah. So, yeah, um, so we'll try to acknowledge them if we don't get to them. We can look through them, get to them on the next time. Keep pouring them in. If we if you watch it again and you have something else different, mm-hmm. please comment. We'll read those comments and we'll Absolutely. get back to you. We definitely will get back to you. Absolutely. So once again, this is the first episode of Talking the Word podcast. I um, want to thank Bishop Gary L. Bush. Thank you, sir. For senior. allowing us. <laughs> senior. Senior. <laughs> for allowing us to use um, the sanctuary to um, host the podcast. Um, and so while we're talking about him, September 27th at 530, he will be our guest. And the topic is what it takes to be a godly man. Oh, yeah. So we are going to get him in... Um, I don't know about jeans, but I can guarantee you he will be in gym shoes. <laughs> that so, Dad, you got Bishop, enough. Bishop, you, got you enough will of be in gym shoes. <laughs> now you can wear. Listen, you can wear a jacket. You can wear slacks. I don't care. But you will be in gym <laughs> shoes on that Friday. You will be relaxed. We're gonna get you laughing. Is that the requirement? Gym yeah, shoes. Gym shoes. <laughs> you gotta have sneakers. Yes. That that is the, that is now the requirement. So everybody who comes on our podcast, gym shoes is the requirement. Jordan's preferably. <laughs> yes. Amen to that. 
but see that's that's what I like. I like I like the the atmosphere yeah. of fun, yeah. but still talking about the word. Amen. And so um, I want to thank my panelists, my my hosts, um, Kyle Van, Chris Halfaker. This is the beginning of something special, man. Yeah. Thank you for tuning so, in. Thank you for tuning in. I want to thank um, Evangelist Monique Glasby woof, woof. for um, running the, the camera back there. I think I just seen Dad drive by. <laughs> 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 I, think, I think I did. But I, see, I seen them black rims on the bins. So that's what I think. But oh, we'll yeah. find out in about five minutes. But once again, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Um, appreciate it. Like, share, comment. Um, once Subscribe. again, um, Talking the Word has a Facebook account. It's literally talking. It's not T A L K I N G. It's just I N apostrophe. So type in talking the word. We're on Instagram as well. Um, for now, we'll be going live from Abundant Love until we build up the talking the word site, and then once we do that, we'll go live from there. Great. Um, eventually, we'll. Yep, I did yep, see him. That yep. is it. <laughs> <laughs> told you. I told you. I knew it. I see them black limbs. <laughs> I seen I seen them black hey, He about to come here and yeah. tell him he ain't wearing no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't wearing no gym shoes. No, he had <laughs> he had to go to a service, so he can't wear gym shoes today. Oh, but yeah. Friday, as he walks in, he <laughs> will be in gym shoes <laughs> on the twenty fifth. Yes, sir. That is that is that is Friday the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Yeah. In all seriousness, I am so looking forward to that episode. Yes, sir. All right. Because we have a great man of God. Yes. And just to get him in a relaxed atmosphere and talking about what it takes to be a godly man, and we have a great example of that, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. But thank you for tuning in. That is all. Um, Should we say a brief prayer? Yeah, go ahead. Go okay. ahead, Elder. Yeah. Um, once again, I just want to thank you all for tuning in, and we're going to pray, and then we're going to sh shut it down for this episode. All right, yes, sir. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for all that you do in our lives, but most importantly, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this podcast and the three uh, panelists, the hosts. Uh, we ask that you continue to work and do in our lives, give us complete and uh, good topics to talk about, and we ask and encourage you to open the hearts and the minds of those that are watching the podcast to receive thus uh, the things that we are talking about. Father, we just glorify you, and we thank you. Um, we lift you up, and we, we're we thankful. We're just thankful, and we uh, praise and worship and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Amen.